Hi guys, welcome back to Fusion Fat Loss and Nutrition Transform You Online. This week we uh, discuss and learn all about uh, one of the most confusing macronutrients that uh, I'm aware of and it seems that you either love them or you loathe them. Um, the wonderful carbohydrate. So um, it is, as stated on that front slide, a complex story and um, in many ways, as I said, it's uh, perceived to be either friend or foe. So my job um, in this program is to assist you in removing any of the enigma uh, that is associated with carbohydrate and allow you to uh, make a very informed decision about uh, what carbohydrates are, what they do, and how they assist in your normal everyday uh, tasks. Um, so let's um, delve in, hey, and uh, have a bit of a peruse. I think you'll be fascinated with all the information that you get. So what is a carbohydrate, most importantly? Um, I think a lot of people, when we first sit down and t mention the word carbohydrate, the things that tend to come to mind are things like pasta, bread, cereal, grain. Would I be correct in stating that? I'm that good, I can see you nodding through the cyberspace. So yeah, you're right. I think um, that is the general perception. However, I want you to understand this, that a carbohydrate technically is any plant-based food, anything at all. So lettuce, cucumber, broccoli, they're carbohydrates, believe it or not. So you're also right in the believing that pasta, bread, rice, and uh, cereals uh, also fit into that. But did you know that sugar, so you know, simple table sugar is carbohydrate, fruit sugar, fructose is carbohydrate, milk sugar, lactose is carbohydrate, uh, maltose sugar that's uh, glucose bound to glucose is carbohydrate. So there's a wonderful many, my friends. So it's not just the poor old starch, which is the carbohydrate. So let's... Uh, Move in with a bit of gusto. Quite simply, it is this, an element of carbon plus water. So this is why, as you heard me in the opening, carbohydrate. So it, as it states there, it's the hydrate of the carbon molecule that uh, manufactures this wonderful macronutrient. Yes, that's correct. This is what a carbohydrate is. Six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. That is the wonderful glucose molecule aka carbohydrate. They are sugar compounds that plants make when exposed to light. And I'm sure you can all remember that back in the day, guys, early on in science, we learned about photosynthesis, you know, plants manufacturing energy uh, through sunlight. And um, isn't it wonderful to know that these, the energy that's produced from the sun allows the manufacture and synthesis of these wonderful plants, which we hook into and uh, ascertain energy and nutrients from. So the process of making sugar compounds is called photosynthesis. See, all of that stuff we learned back in science would come back to haunt us. But did you know this? For every gram of glucose, you know, wonderful thing, carbohydrates, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and those six wonderful oxygen molecules, along with that storage goes 3.5 grams of water. So for every gram of carbohydrate that you have, three and a half grams or thereabouts is bound to that one glucose molecule. So I hope a penny starts to drop. Now, this is why all of a sudden, you can see it, can't you? I can see it going, wow. So for every gram of carbohydrate, all of this water's bound. So is this why, Craig, they say go on a no-carbohydrate diet to lose weight? Ah, the penny drops. You couldn't be any further from the truth, guys. You're so correct. How good is that, knowing that this is why when people go on a low or no-carbohydrate diet, a lot of the weight they lose initially is Water weight, because you take carbohydrates away, one gram of carbohydrate, you're nearly taking four grams of uh, water with it. So on a scale, you're gonna be a lighter version of yourself, no doubt. But the scary thing is, are you gonna be a lighter, fatter person? Skinny fat, and we'll discuss that at, at various stages through the program. So weight gain is not always fat gain, and we will cover that once more. 
Interesting, isn't it? I told you you'd be fascinating with all this brilliant information. It's fantastic. That's carbohydrate. I had to do it. That's the science geek in me. So you see the carbon backbone, then bound to this, all these carbon molecules, my friends, are all of these oxygen and hydrogen molecules. So this makes up the wonderful carbohydrate. Absolutely fantastic. So C6, 12 hydrogens, and uh, so this is, oh, sorry, this is a split carbohydrate molecule. You'll see one carbon, one water, one hydrogen. So it's not glucose. It's just a simple glu uh, split glucose molecule. But you get the picture, don't you? Let's move on. Oh, yes, the carb coma. Who's done it before? I know I have. I remember when I was a competitive bodybuilder, guys, and I know it's a bit of a story and it might be a bit off track, but it's not really because it's, um, obviously, unfortunately, there's this perception with the bodybuilding fraternity that uh, you have to go through famine almost and absolutely depletion and elimination and starvation and all those wonderful things to get to your 4 or 5% body fat to be on stage. And so you'd be dieting for a good 16 to 20 weeks of full-on deprivation. And that you finally get there and you get your trophy at the end. And then it's all feeding frenzy time. And you hook into everything and anything for days and days after. And the amount of weight you put on quickly, rapidly through glycogen replenishment or carbs being stored in the muscles and liver and all of the water weight in carbohydrate. No, I kid you not, guys. I put on 12 kilos in three days um, after my last show and it was phenomenal, the amount of weight. However, because of the carbohydrate effect and your blood glucose, because of all these glucose molecules, your blood sugar levels rise. And you know when your blood sugar levels rise, you want to have that Spanish siesta. So here's this carb coma. So you hook into all the tucker and then, oh my God, like on Christmas Day, who's had a wonderful Christmas Day? And you sit down at the end of the day and go, oh my goodness, I need the siesta. 30 winks will do me well. And this is because of the carbohydrate or the glucose rush. So yes, carbohydrates. The science. Here we go. Let's move into carbohydrates. So you've got simple carbohydrates, which are your sugars, fructose, glucose, and lactose. And then you've got your complex carbohydrates, starch, cellulose, grains, plant cells, etc. So we've got fibrous, car uh, fibrous carbohydrates, so which are your plant-based materials, and you've got your starchy carbohydrates, which come from your breads and grains and cereals, etc., guys. And in those different types of fiber, you have soluble fiber, which um, comes from oats and from apples and peaches, pears in the form of pectin. And then you've got insoluble fiber, which is like the skeleton of the plant, which the human body, that means you and I, um, don't have specific enzymes that can break down the skeleton of the plant. So ultimately, this is what goes through our gastrointestinal tract, our gut, like a big broom and cleans out all the dead cells, debris, and removes the toxins, and we shed uh, all of that material in our feces. So carbohydrates are a wonderful, absolute integral part to our health and well-being and our physiological function on a day-to-day -day basis. So be very, 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 very careful to look at eliminating them um, from your diet. Unless, of course, my friends, it's uh, you've been diagnosed with a specific uh, ailment such as FODMAP, which is a specific uh, dietetic disease um, when you don't deal with carbohydrates and metabolizing and digesting them well at all. So FODMAP stands for fermentation of oligo, mono, and polyunsaturated sugars or carbohydrates. And then you've got things like, uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of gluten intolerance now. Um, it seems to be flavor of the decade. Um, so just be aware that um, they aren't all doom and gloom carbohydrates team. It's more about getting educated and understanding that as with proteins, not all proteins are created equal, carbohydrates are also the same. They do vary. And this picture will give us a little bit of an overview. So a simple carbohydrate, simply means that there's a glucose molecule, there's a galactose molecule, and there's a lactose molecule. So a a, these are mono, mono meaning one. Um, they're single units, 
but then they can become friends and bind or what we call bond together and then they can form two. So here we've got a lactose individual unit bound to another lactose individual unit and the writing's not very clear there but that's called a monosaccharide meaning one and this is disaccharide meaning two. However, we move then out of the simple sugars and we move into complex food sources. So let's think this could be a slice of bread, this could be uh, a bowl of cereal. So we can see that there's many, many individual molecules bound together in chains and they can form various forms of chains. So some are a straight line and some form branches off. And it's these branch ones which we tend to store in our muscles called, um, what is it? Uh, it'll come back to me. Um, that uh, the way they form, um, the carbohydrate molecules, they form in a big branch and it's these branched arms that we work on breaking down first to cleave or to ascertain our energy from. And then we get these big blocks of energy um, that supply multiple, multiple and sugar molecules. And every single one of these individual, uh, like Lego blocks team, are individual sugar molecules, glucose molecules. So this is where people get a little scared about them and go, well, God, do I need all of these sugar? Even if it's a carbohydrate, let's say we look at a, a piece of sourdough bread, and in there, there's next to zero sugar. It might be less than one gram of sugar. However, there might be uh, 40, oh no, it's not that much, maybe 25 grams of carbohydrate in a, in a big slice of sourdough bread. That would mean that there's all of these multiple individual molecules of glucose. So there might be any added sugar to the product, but it's naturally consists of all these compa uh, compound starchy molecules. And each one of those molecules are an individual sugar molecule. So it's quite technical in that regard, but the simple things to take out of this. Simple sugars, so our really fast acting ones, which are in lollies and cakes and energy drinks and uh, things that aren't necessarily very good for us in regards to supplying any dietary fiber, any vitamins or minerals, technically are simple carbohydrates. When we move into our starches and fibrous things, we, these are more like our plant-based foods team. So uh, Mother Nature's gifts, apples, peaches, pears, bananas, broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, squash, all these wonderful food sources. So here we go, a little overview, carbohydrates, all and sundry. Complex carbohydrates, so carbohydrates, remember guys, anything that's off a tree, out of the ground, it's a plant, okay, anything. Complex carbohydrates, these are our fibers and starches, so again, fruits and vegetables, uh, cereals, grains, husks, those sorts of things, legumes, all fit into here. Simple carbohydrates, glucose, sucrose, table sugar, uh, fructose, which is, you know, in fruit, but it's the things they'd use in energy drinks more so. Uh, lactose, milk sugar that are in yogurts and, and milk accordingly. So that's where they, they're they simple, single and, do, and die, meaning two. So good sources in the complex carbohydrates and starches are your potatoes and breads, uh, dietary fiber, insoluble fiber, as I mentioned, guys, a good source of bran flakes um, in there. One of the best sources of insoluble fiber are oats, guys, because of something called beta-glucans, which lower your blood cholesterol levels and can help assist in lowering your blood sugar levels. So really good to know. And then we've got our soluble fiber over here. Sorry, I, I retract. Insoluble fiber else is the things that I talked about are your broccoli, cauliflower, uh, zucchini, squash, those things there that um, are the plant-based skeleton that we can't break down and clean out your tube and are removed in feces. That's your insoluble fiber. So just think plant-soluble skeleton. We don't have enzymes that break down the skeleton. Therefore, we can't digest it. So there's no calorie content that comes from that food. Soluble fiber is ones we can break down. So you'll see here oatmeal, which is what I'm getting at, our, your, your traditional oats, your steel-cut oats your psyllium husks, uh, fruit, 
Um, a lot of fruits have your soluble fiber. They're the ones, as mentioned before, help lower cholesterol and blood glucose levels. But as you can see, a common denominator through the whole thing is glucose. Everything you eat, whether a fairy floss, a piece of bread, or a banana, ends up here. That's the only way your body uses that food. It doesn't use it as a banana, doesn't use it as sourdough bread, doesn't use it as broccoli. It's all used in that form as an energy source. All the antioxidants and phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals, different story. But the end result, if we need to move and take a breath, this is what we're using, glucose. When we look over here under the sugars, the simple carbohydrates, disaccharides, two sugars, so sucrose, which is uh, fructose, fruit sugar, and glucose bound together. Lactose is uh, galactose and galactose mixed together, and maltose. So there your sugars mixed together. Monosaccharide, one sugar, glucose, fructose, and galactose. They're your only ones that operate uh, as individual entities. And then we move, see sucrose and glucose is uh, your fructose, uh, lactose and glucose is galactose, and maltose, which is glucose bound to glucose. So a little bit complicated, so the take home about this is no matter what you eat that's plant, the only way your body uses it in the end is glucose. Are there better options? Of course, in regards to energy, health and well-being and satiety and helping in your gastrointestinal tract health and immunity, it's eating foods from this area rather than here. These ones supply all the fiber, these ones have none. These ones have a lot of dietary uh, valuables, such as vitamins and minerals and electrolytes. These will have none unless added, like in uh, Powerade or Gatorade, etc. So take home picture, all carbohydrates are plants. These are your best format because they're the ones that will keep you fuller for longer, help you poop better, help keep your cholesterol down, control your blood glucose, levels and keep you leaner and meaner and i'm sure that's what most of us are after after correct me if i'm wrong please so let's look at the energy thing i was talking about so i said that uh, your body uses carbohydrates in one format predominantly in the form of glucose and there's four calories per gram of uh, carbohydrate which is exactly the same as protein which also has four calories per gram which we discussed last week uh, eat carbohydrates and your blood glucose levels will rise. So you can understand why. We've seen, if we go right back to this slide, all of these glucose molecules. Remember, every single building block is a glucose molecule. So if we eat them, we've got lots of glucose molecules, correct? I can see you nodding. I'm glad you're getting it. So as it says there, eat carbohydrates and your blood glucose levels will rise. This leads to your pancreas secreting insulin to balance the blood glucose levels. Get it right and the environment is happy. Get it wrong and the glucose is stored as body fat, a triglyceride. Your body runs on glucose. So let's cut the fat here. What does that mean? We eat carbohydrates. Those individual building blocks are broken away from the big chains and broken into individual bits. They circulate in your blood and your blood glucose levels rise. To compensate for this, which can be very dangerous to your eyes and your nerves, what your body has in is a uh, uh, built-in default and that default is called your pancreas it secretes god love it insulin which is a storage hormone insulin's like a taxi or a chaperone it enters your bloodstream it um, says glucose molecules jump in the back of the taxi i'm driving to you to one of three places and it's deposited in your muscle cell which is fantastic it's deposited in your liver cells which are fantastic and it's deposited in your fat cells, which isn't so fantastic. So that's the thing about insulin. It's a very anabolic, meaning building, hormone. It can work for us or against us. And that's why what we put in on our fork is critical, absolutely critical. So the take home is every time you eat carbohydrates, your blood glucose levels will be elevated. How quickly that happens and how high that happens is depending on what you put on your fork. Put things with fiber and vitamins and minerals and low calorie content and it doesn't go up dramatically at all. Put things in there that are fully human interfered with food like stuff, pastries, cakes, lollies, uh, you know, caramel lattes, chocolate donuts, chocolate muffins and another story and in doing so 
You're becoming a great friend with that and this. Both horrible. Scary, isn't it? I, mean, I hope you're saying yes and then you're going no because now you know how to take control. It's great. Whoops. And diet Pepsi, please. I don't want to gain any weight. It's scary, but it's a traditional Western diet, guys. We're, you know, it's we're time poor. We crave for convenient foods. And it's so very scary. And there's, it, it brings, oh, I just shudder. Because that plate there is what could cost the family maybe $15 to $20 and feed an entire family and poison an entire family. Um, yet, you know, a big bag of lettuce will cost you six bucks. So, yeah, but then you've got to get all the other bits and pieces, pardon me, to go with it, guys. So it's quite scary. And I can understand the conundrum where, you know, the dollar value and the budgets available um, really d does become quite a conundrum or quandary for individuals and families because of they don't have an endless supply of income. However, the consequence of the buffet will we'll come knocking. And if we continue to eat foods like the one on this slide here, the elevation in your blood glucose levels is absolutely horrendous. It's like having a fire hose of glucose circulating through your blood, which is extremely dangerous, again, to ear, not, uh, ears, eyes, and nerves. And your body will control the level of glucose by secreting insulin. But as we've said, when you've got to store that carbohydrate in your muscles and liver. Here's the scary thing, guys. We only have a storage capacity on average between 300 and 450 grams of carbohydrate within your muscle cells and your liver cells. The more muscle you have, the more carbohydrate storage. Males have larger muscles on average, so they can store more like that for 450 grams. For ladies, you know, it's more around that low high twos, early 300s, so not a lot. You haven't got a lot of error for judgment. Um, judgment for error, sorry. So the scary thing is that means that there's a hell of a lot that gets packed up and stored in the fat cells because they don't have a limit, guys. They will store as much triglyceride, carb turn carbohydrates into a fat store, which is really scary. So take it on board. What you're learning here today is life-changing. So you can store about 450 grams of glycogen in the liver and muscles total, as stated just recently. Your cells budget energy very carefully. If your diet provides more carbohydrate than you perform your daily duties, yes, the rest is converted to body fat. So this is the unfortunate thing where people get this phobia for carbohydrates. Well, if I eat carbohydrate, I won't put on weight. If I don't eat, sorry, if I don't eat carbohydrate, I won't put weight on. If I don't eat carbohydrate, I won't store body fat. And it's in some level, that can be the case. However, if we're exercising, you know, on average two, four times a week, um, we're enjoying being fit, healthy, and robust, full of effervescence, carbohydrate are necessary because they're a performance molecule. They enable us to do stuff. They're the body's favorite energy source. So it's not about, once I stated earlier before, about eliminating these. It's about getting educated. So did you know carbohydrates are muscles friends? Why? They are protein sparing. This is amazing. We've talked about muscle being God. It's king. It's the fountain of youth. Muscle's the only place we burn carbohydrates and fats. So... It's also protein sparing. Why? How does that work? Well, if we didn't supply carbohydrate in the diet, the body would have to get our blood glucose from somewhere else because blood glucose is critical. We need it for survival. So, you know, your red blood cell cells only utilize carbohydrates or glucose. It's its favorite source. So what would happen then is the body would go through a process of the glucose alanine cycle. It's an amino acid, a building block of protein. I'm sure you remember from last week's discussion. And breaks proteins down. Oops, it breaks your muscle down to convert to glucose through a process of called gluconeogenesis. Gluco, glucose, neo, synthetic, genesis, making. What does it mean? It means that it will break your muscle down and convert it into sugar molecules. Whoops, that means this. You have less muscle, you burn less fat, you have less muscle, 
you burn less carbohydrate, you have less muscle, you're a skinny fat person, and you have less muscle means that, guess what? You're less active. Oh my God, this is a lose-lose. So as you can see, carbohydrates enable as much protein to be spared. As long as we're eating the right amount of protein, and we saw last week, again, ladies and gentlemen, your serving sizes or portions of recommendation for starting or baseline for your proteins. So again, it's not all uh, doom and gloom, is it? It's about knowing this stuff. And believe me, guys, I believe this should be common theme information at every level of schooling, um, that this information is brought to the forefront. Um, but that's for another day, isn't it? So what else do carbs do? Yes, they spare muscle tissue, which is mighty awesome. It assists in your body absorbing calcium. It may lower blood cholesterol levels due to the wonderful dietary fiber, which we've discussed. And this is fantab fantabulous, fantastic, guys, in that we do know it does that. It's an absolutely amazing trigger for that. Provide fuel for the amazing, friendly bacteria in the gut, Week 10, guys, we have a whole week on gut health, the microbiota. It is mind-blowing. If you want to know about how you won't get sick anymore and how to lose fat, wow, we'll be talking about those bacteria. And as you can see there, what do carbohydrates do? Predominantly fibrous carbohydrate, your plants, fruits, and vegetables, they provide the fuel for the amazing friendly bacteria in your gut. It's fantastic. Provide the amount of sugar in your blood so that all your cells get the energy they need. Remember, we talked about the red blood cells just a minute ago, how they thrive on glucose, carbohydrate molecules. Fantastic stuff. Dietary fiber is a group of complex carbohydrates that are not a source of energy for you. So that means there's no calorie content that you're absorbing. How cool is that? So again, it supplies satiety, keeps you full for longer. It cleans you out not only through the gastrointestinal tract, cleaning out all the dead cells and toxins, which is wonderful, but it also cleans out the, the old, uh, yeah, the lower end of your body and eliminates all dead debris through feces. Great stuff. It keeps you healthy, wonderfully healthy. Your digestive enzymes cannot break down the bonds that hold the sugar molecules together in this dietary fiber, plant-based insoluble fiber that we've talked about. Remember I mentioned it's like the skeleton of the plant. Fiber adds next to zero calories to your eating regime and cannot be converted to sugar. Once again, because we don't have the enzymes or the work potential to convert. So just because you can't digest it doesn't mean it's not brilliant. It's a godsend, guys, because you can't absorb it. Remember I said it's fantastic because it has no calories but keeps you full. It helps absorb water. It helps cleans out your gastrointestinal tract and keeps you pooping better. It is absolutely wonderful. And did you know the recommendation for dietary fiber for a female is somewhere between 25 and 30 grams a day and for a male roughly 30 to 40 grams a day. So it means that you need to be eating carbohydrate, plant-based fruit, and vegetables, guys, every meal you sit down to something, you should be eating some fruit and vegetables. That's going to give you a potent supply of dietary fiber. So it's recommended we be eating about 400 grams of dietary of uh, carbohydrate-based foods a day, predominantly from fibrous carbohydrate. So you can break that down to you know five meals on average, 80 grams a serve. So it's really just about getting a couple of handfuls of salad material, a couple of bits of fruit and vegetable, getting some sweet potato, some pumpkin, maybe some legumes, and um, away we go. We're cooking. The secret is this, though, guys. Don't be, don't get uh, gun ho about it. If you're not eating a lot of dietary fiber now, be very, very careful that you just don't go and bath in the stuff all of a sudden. I'll tell you why, because there'll be dietary repercussion in this format that you'll be bloated, you'll be gassy, and you'll be socially unacceptable, if you get my drift. Pooey. More fiber facts. Two types, and we've discussed this uh, at length already, but I'll just nut it out a little bit. Insoluble fiber. Remember, insoluble is the plant-based skeleton found in whole grains and other plants. It's a natural laxative. 
absorbs water, helps you feel satisfied longer, helps remove all the nasties from your gastrointestinal tract, and relieve and prevent digestive disorders. Bulks up the stools and assists in reducing hemorrhoids. Great stuff. They're all positives. Don't you agree? And then soluble fiber. So as it said, pectin in apples, beta glucans in oats and barley, help lower cholesterol, therefore protect, protect against heart disease, forms gel when it absorbs water, again increasing satiety, and assists in helping lower your blood glucose levels. Again, absolute fascinating physiological benefits. They only lead to this, a more effervescent, robust, and immune strong you. Why would you not be doing it? Fantastic. I hope, again, it's just triggered this amazing thing in your mind that you go, well, carbohydrates aren't all bad. Now I understand why Greg uses that mantra. Off a tree, out the ground, swing in the ocean, walk the land. Mother Nature's pharmacy fuels us. It nourishes, it doesn't punish. So here's a bit of a, again, a, snip, a snapshot. Soluble and insoluble fibers. Soluble, dissolve in water and slow down digestion to give you that feeling of fullness. Oatmeal, lentils, apples, oranges, nuts, flax seeds, beans, dried peas, cucumber, celery, oats, just to name a few. Um, has it got psyllium husks in there? They also fit there. So there's a lot, guys. It's just a, a bit of a tidbit. Insoluble, add bulk to the diet and help with constipation. Have the laxative benefit. You see there some wonderful, wonderful foods. Barley, couscous, brown rice, zucchini, broccoli, which is my favorite food ever. Cabbage, green beans, dark green leafy vegetables like uh, spinach, bok choy, wonderful things. And your root vegetable skins. Um, so again, sweet potato, pumpkin, taro, you name it. Fantastic stuff. I hope that picture serves its purpose. So take home. Carbs get a bad rap. Eat carbs, enjoy them. In fact, earn more of them through exercise. The more intense exercise you undertake, the more likely you are to need the starchy carbohydrates. Remember we saw right at the start that uh, the starchy carbohydrates are complex molecules, meaning that there was lots of individual glucose molecules stuck together. What would that mean? It means it's a huge housing for energy and carbohydrates that will allow you to perform like you've never performed before. But as it states there, exercise is that fundamental principle that's required to enable you to use. Remember we talked about where you store carbohydrates? In muscle cells, in the liver cells. So if you've exercised, what's going to be depleted? God, you're smart guys. I, I heard you then. Your muscle stores of carbohydrate are depleted. That means when you go and exercise next, if you're not eating and replenishing, what's going to happen to the intensity of your workout? You're going to run like a buzz box. You're going to be tinkering away little, like a little day with Matiz. You haven't got no zing or boom. You're not going to be a V8 supercar. So it's going to be important that after exercise, one of the predominant fuels, if not the only fuel used, you'll use a little bit of fat and some aerobic exercise, maybe a little bit intramuscular fat and weight training. But predominantly, it's carbohydrate or glucose. So after training, it's imperative that we look at carbohydrate replenishment. And don't forget to eat most of your carbs from colorful fruit and vegetables. When you do eat the starchy carbs, focus on fiber. So we've talked about vibrance, diversity, eating lots of different colors. Just don't eat greens, reds, greens, purples, pinks, blacks, you name it, oranges. Eat all the colors under the rainbow because they supply all of that antioxidant, phytochemical, Vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, wonderful stuff. And most importantly, guys, as we've talked about multiple times today, fibrous uh, uh, formats. So whether it be insoluble or soluble, fantastic. And as I said, earn them. Make exercise a staple. Looking at two, four workouts a week that will enable you to be able to oh, just prime, rewire, re-engineer your metabolism to be working for you, not against you. So you'll be burning energy rather than storing energy in the form of a triglyceride, and then leading to subcutaneous and visceral fat, which is yucky things that we'll talk about in the next few weeks. So carbohydrate foods, take a snapshot. It's a picture. All of this stuff, dietary fiber, 
vitamins, minerals, electrolytes. These are your starchy foods, so like your sweet potatoes, your pumpkins, uh, your oats, you know, really good forms. Some, some breads are okay, not all of them. Some pasta, nothing wrong with pasta, guys. If you've earned it, it's what we put on it and how we drown it with, you know, uh, parmesan cheese and creamy sauces and yeah, that's what happens. It's not the pasta that's the problem. It's what we add to it. Even with bread, you know, people focus on bread. Um, there's certain breads that are really good sources and or we talk about those in our uh, supermarket tours. But um, it's, again, traditionally what we put on those. We you know, drown them in butter and jam and peanut butter and things along those lines rather than a, a tidbit of uh, avocado or a bit of olive oil, some good oils. And again, we'll discuss fats next week, guys. So you've got that to look forward to. So starchy carbs, earn them. So like we've got there, so starchy carbs, bananas, bread, cereals, grains, etc. Really good um, in that post-training and pre-training components because your pre-training meal will give you some optimization of energy to be able to perform fantastically. And after training, well, as we've talked about, guys, you've spent a lot of that muscle stored carbohydrate, which we call glycogen. So it'll be time to aid in recovery, repair, replenish, and which enables us to redo um, that exercise bout. So again, be very wary. So where you're looking at eating these and how much. And um, we'll discuss very shortly our portions. Anytime, fibrous carbohydrates. And I recommend every single meal that you're hooking into, breakfast, lunch, dinner, mid-morning, mid-afternoon, supper, there's some form of fibrous carbohydrate. So, you know, your plant-based foods, your, you know, traditionally what people call, you know, uh, vegetables and salad material and fruit. But again, it's carbohydrate. But oh, guys, I can't, I can't put enough weight behind how important these things are to your health and well-being and defying, and defying sorry, disease and changing your body shape. You know, we talk a lot about um, how exercise is important, but fueling and what sits on the fork is imperative. I love that picture. What about this one? So how much to eat? Men, starting point right here. So for your starchy carbohydrates, guys, so for your rice, for your potato, for your sweet potato, for your pumpkin, for your pasta, it's two palmfuls. That's a really good start point, guys. So for your berries as well, two. It gives you a good indication, a good start point. For... That's for your starches, but for the, again, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, etc., they're going to be these ones. It's two full fists, okay, of, of uh, material that are going to be the supply sources for you. Ladies, one. One. And I urge you to review these heavily to make sure that you get your head around these things regularly. Men, starches, two, two. Ladies, one, one. Next week, continue with your food diary, photos, and making contact with me. And next week, we talk fats, guys. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So homework to do, food diary, keep taking your photos, testing and measuring, and reviewing your goals. And next week, we talk the wonderful, fantastic fat. You'll be surprised. Fusion, fat loss and nutrition will help transform you.